students welcome to vtech vtech is india's number one platform for btech students we provide university specific video lessons for all btech branches we also provide separate modules for campus recruitment such as tcs capgemini wipro infosys etc please install our app and subscribe to our youtube channel in this video i am going to solve numerical ability of tcs and qt in the actual exam the number of questions will be 26 and the time allotted is 40 minutes the level of difficulty is on par with actual tcs exam please pay attention this will be very useful for your exam in this video we will be discussing about tcs aptitude and qt model paper see the first question an urn contains six red four blue two green and three yellow marbles if four marbles are picked up at random what is the probability that one is green two are blue and one is red so out of this total marbles we should pick only 2 plus 1 3 plus 1 4 so we should pick total four marbles out of the given marbles and that two the one out of those four marbles one should be green color or uh, and two should be blue color and one should be red color so first let us count how many total marbles are there So six red, six plus four blue plus two green plus three yellow. That is equal to total fifteen marbles are there. So out of those fifteen marbles, we should pick four marbles. That is, we will pick in fifteen C four ways. Out of these fifteen marbles, we should pick four marbles in fifteen C four ways. Now they ask us to find the probability that one is green. And uh, two are blue and one is red. So out of them, one should be green. So total, how many green marbles are there? Two green marbles are there. So out of two green, one green you should pick, and you should also pick two blue marbles. So how many blue marbles are there? Four blue marbles are there. Out of them, you should pick two and one red marble. So how many red marbles are there totally? There are six red marbles. So out of the six red marbles, you should pick one red marble. So this is our favorable event. According to the definition or formula of probability, probability is equal to number of favorable events divided by total number of events. So what are our favorable events? Two C one into four C two into six C. One and what are our total number of events divided by fifteen C four? So two C one means two factorial by one factorial into one factorial into four C two four factorial by two factorial into four minus two factorial six C one six factorial by one factorial into six minus one factorial by fifteen C four fifteen factorial by Four factorial into fifteen minus four factorial. So this two factorial means two, one factorial means one. I am writing this four factorial as four into three into two factorial divided by two factorial into four minus two. That is nothing but two factorial into six factorial. I am rewriting it as six into five factorial divided by one factorial into six minus one. That is Five factorial divided by. I'm rewriting fifteen factorial as fifteen into fourteen into thirteen into twelve into eleven factorial divided by four factorial into eleven factorial. Now here two factorial, two factorial, five factorial, five factorial, eleven and eleven factorial gets cancelled. So and here two factorial means two one times four two times. Here four factorial means we will get twenty four. So rewrite this four factorial as four into three into two into one. So three one times five times four two times. This is seven times one times six times one times three times. So we will get two into two into three into six in the numerator divided by five into seven into thirteen into. Three in the denominator. So again, we can cancel three three. 
so total you will be getting 24 by 455 is our answer so option b 24 by 455 is our answer so in 24 by 455 is we can pick one green two blue and one red marbles out of the given number of marbles see the next question here in how many ways can the letter of the word moment be arranged? M O M E N T. So total how many letters are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So total we are having 6 letters. These 6 letters can be arranged in 6 factorial ways. So that is 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 factorial divided by 2 factorial. So, we will get 30, 34, 120, 123, 360. So, option A, 360 is our answer. So, in 360 ways, we can arrange the letters of the word moment. See the next problem. In how many ways a committee consisting of 5 men and 6 women can be formed from 8 men and 10 women? So, total they are 8 men and 10 women. From these 8 men, we should select 5 men. So, it will be 8C, 5. And so, here we are having end. So, write down into. And out of this 10 women, we have to select 6 women. So, 10C, 6. So, that is nothing but equal to 8 factorial by 5 factorial into 8 minus 5, 3 factorial into 10 factorial by 6 factorial into 10 minus 6. That is 4 factorial. So, I can rewrite it as 8 into 7 into 6 into 5 factorial divided by 5 factorial into 3 factorial into 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 into 6 factorial divided by 6 factorial into 4 factorial. So, this both will get cancelled out. 4 factorial is nothing but 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So, 4 twos are 8, 1 times, 3 times, 3 factorial means 6. So, we will get 56 into 37, 120. So, that is equal to 11760. So, in 11760 ways, we can form a committee consisting of 5 members and 6 women from 8 men and 10 women. So, option C is our correct answer. See the next question. What is the first value of n for which n square plus n plus 41 is not a prime? So, whenever you substitute any of the corresponding value of n, the number should not be an prime number. So, this we can do with options verification. So, the given equation is n square plus n plus 41. So, check for option A. That is put n is equal to 1. We will get 1 square 1 plus 1 plus 41 equals to 43. It is a prime number. So, we should not consider this. Next check for option B. Put n is equals to 10. 10 square 100 plus 10 plus 41. That is equals to 151. So, this is also a prime number. So, we can cancel out that option also. Now, put n is equals to 20. So, 20 square means 400 plus 20 plus 41 that is equals to 461 it is also a prime number so this is also eliminated now put n is equals to 40 so 40 square 1600 plus 40 plus 41 so 1681 so this is not an prime number so, when we substitute n is equal to 40, we are not getting a prime number. So, option D is our correct answer. So, see the next question here. If the difference of squares of two natural numbers is 19, find the sum of squares of these numbers. So, let the numbers be A and B. So, difference of squares of two numbers means A square minus B square is equal to 19. So, a square minus b square means a plus b into a minus b. 19 can be written as only 19 into 1. So, equating the corresponding terms, we can rewrite this as a plus b is equal to 19, a minus b is equal to 1. So, when we subtract this both, 
we will get 2a is equal to 20 that implies a is equal to 10. Now substitute a is equal to 10 in any of the equation. In a plus b equal to 19, 10 plus b is equal to 19, b is equal to 19 minus 10 that is nothing but equals to 9. So a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 9. They asked us to find out the sum of squares of these numbers. So we have to find a square plus b square. So that is equal to 10 square plus 9 square. Nothing but 100 plus 81. That is 181 is our answer. So option C 181 is our answer. See the next problem. P and Q are two positive integers such that PQ is equal to 24. Which of the following statements is correct for P plus Q? So first of all in order to find out P and Q first write the factors of 64. So 64 can be written as 64 into 1, 16 into 4, 32 into 2, 8 into 8. So these are only the possible factors for 64. So suppose if I consider these all as P and these all as Q, let us check. P plus Q, 64 plus 1 is equal to 65. 16 plus 4 is equal to 20. 32 plus 2 is equal to 34. 8 plus 8 is equal to 16. So they asked which of the following cannot be the value of P and Q. So in the options we have 16. We also have 20. We also have 65. And the only option which is not the value of P plus Q is 35. Because in the answers we did not get 35. So 35 is not the value of P plus Q. So option C is our correct answer. Now see the next question. A student scores 55 marks in 8 papers of 100 marks each. So he scores 15% of his total marks in English. How much does he score in English? So out of the total marks, how much is the total mark? Each paper is, is comprised of 100 marks and we have total 8 papers. So the total marks are 800. So out of this 800, he has only scored 55%. So the marks, total marks obtained by student is equal to 55% of 800. That is nothing but equal to 55 by 100 into 800. So that is equals to 440. So these are the total marks which he has scored in all the subjects. Now he scores 15% of his total marks in English. So out of the total mark he scored in English, he scored 15% of the total mark. So 15 by 100 into 440. Here 3 times, 2 times, 1 times, 22 times. That is equal to 66. So the number of marks he scored in English is 66. So option C is our correct answer. See the next question. One type of liquid contains 20% water and the second type of liquid contains 35% of water. A glass is filled with 10 parts of first liquid and 4 parts of the second liquid. The percentage of water in the new mixture in the glass is. So one type of liquid contains 20% water out of 10 parts of first liquid. So that is 20% of 10 parts of first liquid plus the second type of liquid contains 25% water out of 4 parts of the second liquid. So 35% of 4 parts of second liquid divided by total number of parts that is 10 plus 4 into they asked us to find out the percentage of water. Percentage means you should multiply with 100. So that is equal to 20 by 100 into 10 plus 35 by 100 into 4 into 100 divided by 14. Since we can all the two terms have 100 as common. So I am writing here as 100. This 100 and this 100 gets cancelled. We will get 200 plus 35 fourths. 
by 140. So that is equal to 340 by 14. So that should be equal to 24 2 by 7 percentage. 24 2 by 7 percentage of water is present in the new mixture in the glass. So option B is our correct answer. See the next question. Of the three numbers, the average of first and the second is greater than the average of the second and third by 15. What is the difference between the first and third of the three numbers? So let the three numbers be x, y and z. So this is first number, this is second number and this is third number. So they have given that the average of first and second numbers is that means average means add those both and divided by 2. Since we are having two terms is equal to is greater than the average of second and third by 15. So greater than the average of second and third. That is y plus z by 2. How much times it is greater? It is greater than 15. So add plus 15. Now x plus y by 2 is equal to y plus z plus take LCM 15 2s are 30. We will get x plus y is equal to y plus z plus 30. Cancel out the y on both sides. Bring z to other side. x minus z is equal to 30. So this is the first number and this is the third number. They asked in the question to find the difference between first and third of the three numbers. So this is nothing but x minus z value that is equal to 30. Here none of these option E is our correct answer. Let us move into next question. The average annual income in rupees of certain agricultural workers is S and that of other workers is C. The number of agricultural workers is 11 times that of the other workers. Then the average monthly income in rupees of all the workers is. So total there are two types of workers. They are agricultural and other type of workers. So let the total number of other type of workers be x. Now the agricultural workers are 11 times the other workers. So these are other workers. Now the agricultural workers will be 11x. So the total number of workers will be x plus 11x that is 12. X. They have given the average annual income of certain type of agricultural workers is x s. So average annual income of agricultural workers is yes and that of other workers is t. Now we have to find out the average monthly income of all workers. So what we will do is now average annual income of each worker gives the total income of the other workers. So x into t plus average income of agricultural worker into total number of agricultural workers give the total amount annual income of that agricultural workers. So 11s into s by total number of workers. So total number of workers are 12x. So that is equal to xt plus 11s x by 12y. In all the terms x is common cancel it out. t plus 11s by 12. So t plus 11s by 12 means option D is our correct answer. See the next problem. A fruit seller professes to sell his fruits at cost price but still gains 25% on his outlay. What weight does he substitute for a kilogram? So even though he is selling at cost price, he is gaining a profit of 25%. That means he is weighing the fruit in a wrong way. Let the error of the weight of the fruit be x. x kilograms or x grams. Let it be x grams. So the remaining uh, fruits will be per kg. We will be having 1000 grams. So the remaining grams will be 1000 minus x. Now this is equals to the profit will be equal to x by 1000 minus x into 100 is equal to 25. That implies 100x is equal to 25 into 1000 minus x. This is 1 times 4 times. 4x is equal to 
thousand minus x. That implies four x minus take this minus x to the other side. It will become plus x is equal to thousand. Five x is equal to thousand. That implies x is equal to thousand by five. That is nothing but two hundred. Well, the error is nothing but here two hundred gram. So total out of thousand, if we remove the two hundred, so it is nothing but eight hundred gram. So eight hundred grams weight he is substituting for a kilogram. So he is weighting only eight hundred grams, but he is calculating or he is making the buyers to believe that it is one kg. So he is reducing two hundred grams for every thousand gram. So he is only weighing eight hundred grams. That is he is substituting. 800 grams instead of 1 kg weight so option a is our correct answer so see the next problem a firm of ready made garments makes both men's and women's shirts its average profit is 6% of the total sales its profit in men's shirt average 8% of the sales and women's shirt comprises of 60% of the output the average profit per Sales rupees in women shirt is. So first, let us consider the total number of sales B X. So here in the total output, women shirt comprises of sixty percent. So the men shirt comprises of forty percent. So they are making a profit of six percent of the total number of sales. That is six percent of X. Now and also they have given that. The men's shirts average a eight percent of the sales. Which output here of the men's shirts are there forty percent of the total output. So eight percent of forty percent of total sales plus now the sales profit from the women's shirts. Let it be women's sales profit be average y percent of the total sales. Y percent average of the sales. So it will be. Y percent of sixty percent of X, so the profit of men plus profit of women is equal to total profit. That is six percent of X. Now that is equals to eight by hundred into forty by hundred into X is equal to Y by hundred into sixty by hundred into X. That is equals to Six by hundred into x. So eight by hundred into forty by hundred into x plus y by hundred into sixty by hundred into y is equal to six by hundred of x. Now y zero zero gets cancelled. Six x y by thousand is equal to six x by hundred minus three twenty x by hundred into hundred. Now, as hundred is common in both, cancel it out. We will get six x y by ten is equal to six x minus three twenty x by hundred. So that implies here we will get six uh, x y by ten is equal to sixty x minus thirty two x by ten. Cancel out ten ten. X also is common in all terms. Cancel it out. So we will get six y is equal to sixty minus thirty two. That is nothing but eight twenty eight. Six y is equal to twenty eight. Y is equal to twenty eight by six. That is equal to four point six 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 rupees. So total the y percent of for one shirt we are getting four point six six rupees. So for one rupee means for one rupee we'll be having hundred paisa. So that is equal to four point six 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 by hundred is equal to zero point zero four six six six. So the average profit per sales in rupees in women shirt is zero point zero four six six six. So option B is our correct answer. See the next question. The petrol tank of an automobile can hold g liters. If a liter was removed when the tank was full, what was the part of the full tank was removed? Simply, the remaining part is equal to part removed by total part. 
that is what is the part removed here a liters of the part is removed say a by what is the total capacity of the tank that is g so a by g is our answer option c is our correct answer see the next problem initially two cups of same volume are filled with milk up to 3 by 5th and 4 by 5th of their volume water is then filled then the two mixtures are mixed and poured in a jug find the ratio of water to milk in the mixture there are two cups and they are of the same volume so let the total volume of the cup be x so here we are having two cups so in the first cup the milk is filled with 3 fifths of the volume of the cup so 3 fifths of the total volume is x so 3x by 5 is filled with milk so the remaining is filled with water so out of five parts three parts are filled with milk so the remaining two parts are filled with water next in the second cup milk is filled with 4 by 5 fifth part of the total volume total volume is the same volume as that of the first cup that is x so 4 by 5 of x is filled with milk so water means out of five parts four parts is filled with milk and remaining one part is filled with water now the two liquid um, the liquids in these two cups is mixed well now we should find out the ratio of water is to milk now let us find the total water in the both the cups that is 2x plus 5 plus 1 by 5 of x that is equals to 3x by 5 total volume of the milk in both the cups that is equals to simply add those both 3x plus 5 plus 4x by 5 that is equals to 7x by 5 now they asked us to find out the ratio of water is to milk so simply divide this both components x by 5 x by 5 will get cancelled so answer is 3 is to 7 here the option is not there so we if they given none of this simply tick the answer option e otherwise you will get an add code see the next problem the mean proportion between 3 plus root 2 and 12 minus root 32 is if a and b numbers are given if we have to find out the mean proportion which is nothing but root of ab now this is treated as a and this number is treated as b so we will write it as 3 plus root 2 into 12 minus root of 32 now i am writing this 32 as root of 16 into 2 root of 16 is nothing but 4 so we can rewrite root 32 as 4 root 2 so that is 3 plus root 2 into 12 minus 4 root 2 so that is nothing but 12 3 is our 36 plus 12 root 2 minus 12 root 2 minus 4 into root 2 into root 2 4 into root 2 whole square So this is whole root. Twelve root to twelve root to get cancelled. Root of thirty-six minus four two is our eight. So we will get root of twenty-eight. Root of twenty-eight can be written as four into seven. We will take four outside. We will get two root seven. So option B is our correct answer. So see here, given that six hundred is divided among A, B, C, forty more than two by five of A share. 20 more than 2 by 7 of b share and 10 more than 9 by 17 of c share may be equal what is the a share so here 40 more than 2 by 5 of a share so 40 more than means 40 plus 2 by 5 of a share is equal to 20 more than 2 by 7 of b share so 20 more than 2 by 7 of b share is equals to 10 more than 9 by 17 of c share so we have to find out what is the a share now first equate these both so 40 plus 2 by 5 a is equal to 20 plus 2 by 7 of b 2 by 5 a is equal to 20 plus 2 by 7 of b minus 40 so 17 into 30 by 10 divided by 9 plus 17 are 34 and 9 are 45 a it is our b share but in the question they have given that a total 600 rupees is divided among a b c so the share of a plus share of b plus 
share of C should be equal to 600. So A plus the share of B in terms of A is equal to 70 plus 7 by 5 of A plus share of C is equal to 510 by 9 plus 34 by 35 A is equal to 600. Now gather all the A terms. So A plus 7 by 5 A plus 34 by 35 A plus 70 plus 510 by 9 is equal to 600. Now take LCM for the A terms that is 5 and 35. 35 is the LCM. Now 35 A plus 5 into 7. Again 35 A plus 34 into 35 A plus take LCM for these both terms it will be 9. So here it is 45, 45. So the LCM for these both terms is 45. A into 45, 45 A. 45 divided by 5 it is nothing but 9. So 9 7s are 63 A plus 34 into 45 and 45. So into 1 A plus take LCM 9. So 360 A plus 5 10 is equal to 600. Now add all the A terms 45 plus 63 plus 34. That is equal to 142A by 45 plus 630 plus 510. 1140 by 9 is equal to 600. Now bring the constant to the other side. 142A by 45 is equal to 600 minus 1140 by 9. That implies 142A by 45 is equal to 5400 minus 1140 divided by 9. So that implies 142A by 45 is equal to 4260 divided by 9. Now A is equal to 4260 divided by 9 into 45 by 142. That implies A share is equal to 149.999. This is nothing but equals to 150 rupees. So the value of A share is option A is the correct answer 150 rupees. Without doing this long procedure, we can solve it in a simple method. Consider 600 is divided among A, B, C. First, they have given that 40 more than 2 by 5 of A and 20 more than 2 by 7 of B and 10 more than 9 by 17 of C. Three terms are equal. Before, neglect this uh, additional terms which we are adding and write down 2 by 5 of A is nothing but approximately equal to 40% of A. And 2 by 7 is approximately equal to 28% of A, 28% of B. And 9 by 17 is approximately equal to 52% of C. So, if we consider that this amount 600 is equally distributed among these three, we will get A share as 200, B share as 200 and C share as 200. But here we are considering that 28% of B. So, out of these three amounts, 28% of B, that is B's amount will be much more greater than A and C. So, the remaining amount should be distributed between 52% of C and 40% of A. So, definitely the share of A and C will be less than 200. By considering these options, we can eliminate the option D and option C. Because there is no possibility of equal distribution, so 200 is eliminated. And there is no possibility of greater than 50% of distribution of A since it is nearly equal to 40%. So option D is eliminated. Now the answer lies between 150 and 170. So here they have given it as 40% of K. If it is equally distributed 40% of 20, 200 is 80 rupees and we are adding 40 rupees to it. So plus 40 is nothing but equals to 120. But it is not equally distributed. So the value rise nearly plus or minus of 120 rupees only. So in the options the nearest value to 120 is 150. So option A is our answer. See the next problem. Square root of 2 into 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 square root of 2. So we should calculate total multiplication of square roots of 2. So first write down square root of 2 into square root of 2 into square root of 2 into square root of 2. So, total we are having 5 roots. First, 
solve this last number which is square root of 2. So, this can be rewritten as square root of 2 into square root of 2 into square root of 2 into this square root I am rewriting as 2 power 1 by 2. Now, this is of the form of a power m into a power n that is nothing but a power m plus n. So, this becomes square root of 2 into square root of 2 into square root of 2 into square root of 2 power 1 plus 1 by 2. So, that is nothing but so it is 2 power 3 by 2. Now, this can be rewritten as square root of 2 into square root of 2 into square root of 2 power 3 by 2 whole power 1 by 2. So, it becomes square root of 2 square root of 2 2 into 3 by 4. Again, we should solve the square root for this value. So, it will become again use the same formula. Again, you should solve the square root of the remaining term and again calculate the uh, same procedure for these two terms also. Instead of this complexity, we can just rewrite this equation as simply here we are having only 2. So, write down 2 power x by the denominator part will be 2 power number of square roots. How many square roots are given in the question? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, total 5 square roots are there. So, write down 2 power 5. So, it is equal to 2 power x by 32. This value is unknown. So, 2 power x by 32. So, in the options, we are having only one option which is 2 power x by 32 form. So, option B will be our correct answer. See the next problem. If 3 power 2 x minus y is equal to 3 power x plus 5, 3 power x plus y is equal to square root of 27, then what is the value of y? So, first they have given that 3 power 2x minus y is equal to 3 power x plus y is equal to root of 27. 27 can be written as 3 power 3. So, because 9 threes are 27, so 3 power 3 square root of 3 power 3 that is nothing but equals to 3 root 3 or it can be written in the powers form as 3 power 3 by 2. Now, I am considering this 3 power 3 by 2. Why? Because here all the bases are equal. So, if we compare just the powers of the corresponding term, we can simply find out the y value. So, first I am considering 3 power 2x minus y is equal to 3 power 3 by 2. Since bases are equal, the power should be equal. So, 2x minus y equal to 3 by 2, 4x minus 2y is equal to 3. So, this is let it be equation number 1. Next one. Consider 3 power x plus y is equals to 3 power 3 by 2. Here also bases are equal. So, power should be equal. x plus y is equal to 3 by 2. 2x plus 2y is equal to 3. So, let it be equation number 2. So, simply if we solve, add these both equations, we can find x value. But we need to find the y value. So, we will solve directly for y. So, multiply equation 2 with 2. It becomes 4x plus 4y is equals to 6. Equation number 1 implies 4x minus 2y is equals to 3. Simply subtract these both equations. Minus 6y is equal to minus 3. y is equals to 3 by 6. That is nothing but 1 by 2. So, option A is our correct answer. Otherwise, simple shortcut is direct substitution of the values of the answer. See the next problem. A sum of money amounts to rupees 5200 in 5 years and to rupees 5680 in 7 years at simple interest. The rate of interest per annum is. So, it amounts to 5200 in 5 years and 5680 in 7 years. So, the difference uh, time period is 2 years. So, for 2 years, the interest will be 5680 minus 5200. That is 480 rupees. So, for 2 years, the rate of interest is 480 rupees. Now, we have to calculate for total 7 years. So, for 2 years, 480 rupees. For 2 years, it is 480 rupees. And for 5 years, it will be 5 by 2 into 480. 1 times 240 times it will be equals to 1200 rupees. So, for 5 years it is 1200 rupees. Now, the principal amount is equals to the total sum at the end of 5 years that is 5200 minus the interest for 5 years is 1200. So, it is 4000 rupees. 
Now we have to find out the rate of interest per annum. So the formula is simple interest is equals to P and R by 100. We know the simple interest is 1200. We have to find R. R is equals to SI into 100 by P into N. So that implies SI is 1200 into 100 divided by principal amount 4000 into number of years. So this is uh, considered related to 5 years. So write down 5. Cancel the terms one time. So R is equals to 6. So the rate of interest is 6%. So without calculating all this, simply there is a shortcut. So here we have found out the simple interest uh, of rupees 480 for 2 years. So for 1 year it will be just 480 by 2, 240 rupees. So the total amount for 5 years is 1200 rupees. For 5 years it is 1200 rupees. Now for 5 years the amount is 5200 rupees. So the principal amount will be 4000 rupees. So this interest 240 rupees divided by the total principal amount 4000 gives us 6 by 100. So 6 by 100 is nothing but 6%. So option B is our correct answer. See the next problem. The compound interest on a certain amount of 2 years at 10% per annum is rupees 525. The simple interest on the same sum of for double the time and half the rate of interest per annum is. First of all they have given the compound interest for 2 years as 525 rupees and the rate of interest is equal to 10%. So we can do it by using the formula of for second year's compound interest Second year's total amount minus the principal amount gives us the compound interest. That is the principal amount is nothing but the first year's amount. So the second year's amount will be P into 1 plus R by 100. Here R is nothing but 10%. So 10 by 100 whole power N. N is nothing but the number of years that is equal to 2 minus P gives us the interest. That is 525 rupees. So P into uh, do the calculation here 1 by 10. So 10 plus 1 by 10 whole square minus P is equal to 525. That is equals to P into 11 by 10 whole square minus P equal to 525. So here we have to calculate the squares and we have to take LCM and we have to subtract that uh, fraction part from 525. It is becoming complicated. So simple procedure is that first they have given the rate of interest per 2 years is 525 rupees at a rate of 10% per annum. So the interest is 525 rupees per 10% per annum. So first I am considering let the amount, principal amount be uh, some 100 rupees. See if the principal amount is 100 rupees, so for the first year since the rate of interest is 10%, it amounts to 100 plus 10 rupees. For the second year, this is for first year and at the end of second year, the compound interest will be the principal amount 100 rupees plus interest on this amount 10 rupees, interest on this amount 100 rupees that is again 10 rupees and the interest on 10 rupees that is at the rate of 10% it is nothing but rupee equals to 1 rupee. 100 plus 10 plus 10 plus 1 is equal to 121 rupees. For at the end of uh, 2 years it will be 121, the sum will be 121. So the rate of interest at the end of 2 years is 121 minus 100 that is equal to 21 rupees. So when the principal amount is 100 rupees the rate of the interest is equal to 21 rupees. When the interest is 525 rupees what will be the principal amount? It is simply 525 by 21 into 100. It is equal to 2500 rupees. So the principal amount will be 2500 rupees. Now we have to calculate simple interest for double the time. So since here it is 2 years, now we will get 4 years and half the rate of interest. Since the rate of interest is 10% in compound, so it will become 5%. So that is equal to P and R by 100. So that is equal to principal amount 2500 into N is equal to 4, R is equal to 5 by 100. So 25 times it will be equals to simple interest is equals to 500 rupees. So option B 500 rupees is our correct answer.
so instead of this doing this whole procedure and solving the square simply we can calculate in this way so the answer is same in both of the cases it is 500 rupees see the next problem one side of a right angle triangle is twice the other and hypotenuse is 10 cm find the area of the triangle so there is a right angle triangle whose hypotenuse is 10 cm and one side is twice the other let it be x and let it will become 2x so abc is a right angle triangle so one side is twice the other and hypotenuse is 10 so they asked us to find the area of the triangle area of the triangle formula is nothing but half base into height that means base is bc and height is ac so if we find out the value of x we can easily calculate the area of the triangle so now i am finding the value of x by using the pythagoras theorem that is hypotenuse square is equal to sum of squares of other two sides that is ac square plus bc square the hypotenuse is given as 10 centimeters so 10 whole square is equals to ac square that is 2x whole square plus bc square x square so 100 is equals to 4x square plus x square so 100 is equals to 5x square 1 time 20 times x is equals to square root of 20 x is equals to 2 root 5 now we have to find out the value of area area is nothing but half bh now x is equals to 2 root 5 here ac becomes 2 into 2 root 5 that is equals to 4 root 5 now that is equals to half into the base is equal to 2 root 5 into height 4 root 5 2 to get cancelled we will get 4 into root 5 into root 5 that is nothing but equals to 5 so it is equals to 20 centimeter square so option a is our correct answer see the next problem if area of a triangular plot increases by 10 percent while the breadth remains the same what will be the ratio of areas of new to the old figures so first the area of the plot is uh, let it uh, consider the original area b x into y that is length into breadth now it increases by 30 percent while its breadth remains same so in the new area triangle triangular area the breadth remains same it is y it is undisturbed but the area is increased by 30 percent that means the length is increased by 30 percent so we can say area is equals to this is new area equals to l into b whereas l is increased by 30 percent that means it becomes 130 x by 100 so 130 x by 100 into the breadth remains same that is y so it is nothing but 13 x y by 10 it is our new area now they asked us to find out the ratio of new to the old ones so the new area to the old ones new area to the old ones is equal to new area is 13 x y by 10 divided by old area is simply x y so x y x y gets cancelled and we will get 13 by 10 that is nothing but equals to 13 is to 10 so the new area is here 13 is to 10 no option is there so option e is our correct answer none of these see the next problem a man and a boy received rupees 800 as wages for five days for the work they did together the man's efficiency in work was three times that of the boy what are the daily wages of the boy so here the man's efficiency is three times than that of the boy so the man is to boy efficiency is equals to three is to one so total the man and boy received a total amount of 800 rupees so they will receive the amount according to the work done so the man can do three times more the work than the boy so simply we can write the total wage is equals to efficiency of the boy 1 divided by total efficiency 4 into 800 that is nothing but equals to 200 rupees so the boy received 200 rupees for 5 days because totally they have done the work for 5 days for 5 days they have received 200 rupees for one day they will receive 1 by 5 into 200 rupees so that is nothing but equals to 40 rupees so option a is our correct answer
See the next problem. A car starts running with an initial speed of 40 km per hour with its speed increasing every hour by 5 km per hour. How many hours will it take to cover a distance of 385 km? So initially the speed of the car is 40. For the next hour it will be 45. For the next hour it will be 50. For the next hour it will be 55 and so on. It covers up to it travels up to the distance is equals to 385 kilometers okay that means the last term up to 385 kilometers it will travel now we should find out how many hours it will take so we can observe that this series is in the form of arithmetic progression so the first term will be a and the difference will be simply the difference of two consecutive terms so we can take 45 minus 40 that is equals to 5 and the last term Sn is equal to 385. We need to find the time taken. That means this is for the first hour. For first hour it is 40. For second hour, third hour, fourth hour and this is for the nth hour. So we need to find out the nth value that is n value where it reaches 385 kilometers. So we will use the formula Sn is equal to n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d that implies the Sn value is 385 is equal to n by 2 into 2 into a is 40 plus n minus 1 into the difference is 5. So that implies 385 into 2 is equal to 4 twos are 80n plus 5n into n 5n square minus 5 into n minus 5n. So, this equals to 770 is equal to 80n minus 5n square. So, 80n minus 5n, it will become 75n. So, it is 75n. Now, so plus 5n square, bring this 5, 770 to the other side, we will get 5n square plus 75n minus 770 is equal to 0. Take 5 common from this both, you will get n square plus 15n minus 154 is equals to 0. That implies n square plus 15n minus 154 is equal to 0. So this 154 can be split as 22 into 7. So it becomes n square minus 22n plus 22n minus 7n minus 154 is equal to 0. Now take n common from these both terms. We will get n plus 22. If I take minus 7 as common here I will get n plus 22 is equal to 0. So n minus 7 into n plus 22 is equal to 0. So n will be either 7 or minus 22. Here n is nothing but the time minus value is eliminated. So we will take only the n is equal to 7. So in 7 hours it will reach 385 kilometers. So in 7 hours the total distance covered will be 385 kilometers. So the option A is our correct answer. So this ends our model paper 2. I hope you all understood it students. Thank you.